Hello and welcome to Nextstar's video series on the Salesforce Developer Workbooks. In this track, we'll be walking you through the Cloudflow Designer Workbook. This video covers Tutorial 3, Creating a Mortgage Calculator. Let's start off by adding a screen element to capture the user's information. We'll go to Setup, Create, Workflow and Approvals, then we'll go to Flows, and then we'll click New Flow. Now from the palette on the left, we'll drag a screen element onto the canvas. And let's name this Enter Your Contact Info. We'll set the unique name to Get Customer Information. Then let's click on Add a Field. And then we'll add three text boxes. For the first one, we'll set this to first name, and we'll also make this required. And we'll set the second text box label to last name. We'll also make this required. And finally, we'll do email address. Send it to required. And now make sure your screen looks like mine, and then press OK. Now that we've collected the user's information in the first screen, we need to check Salesforce if the user already exists. We can do this by using a record lookup element. Let's drag a record lookup element onto the canvas. We'll name the record element Does User Exist? We can press Tab to autocomplete the unique name. And we're going to be looking up the lead object. So we'll press the drop down. Uh, lead is a standard object, so we'll select standard and then we'll select lead. And now we want to match the screen input that we entered on the previous screen to a lead record. We want to match first name, last name, and email address. We can do this by selecting the fields here. We go to standard, first name equals screen input fields, first name, and we'll do this for last name and email. Now what this is saying is that if the screen element, first name, last name, and email address matches a record in Salesforce with the exact same first name, last name, and email address, return a record. If any one of these does not match, let's say the first name and last name match but the email address was different, it won't return a record. Now if it does return a record, we want to capture that information in some variables. We can do that below. We'll select the standard field and then first name. And then we need to create a new variable to store the first name in. We'll make this user first name. And press OK. And then we're going to do this for last name and email. And then finally, email. And now verify that your screen looks like mine and then press OK. Now let's save our flow, but before we do, let's connect the elements and then set a starting element. Drag the arrow and connect them. And then up here, again, you press the green arrow to set as a starting element. And we'll save this, and let's call it Mortgage Calculator. The unique name is fine, and if you'd like to enter a description, go ahead and then press OK. And now let's add a decision element to take a different path whether or not we find a user record. So grab a decision element and drag it onto the canvas. We'll name this decision element user found. 
And then we're going to create two outcomes. One will be true, one will be false. Let's name this true. We'll set the unique name to user found true. And then under the select resource drop down, we'll select record lookups and then does user exist equals and then true. And then the only other path will be false. So let's set our default outcome to false. And then press OK. Now we want to connect the record lookup element to the decision. And the decision element will take a different path, true or false, to whether or not a record was found. So let's fulfill the true path by adding a screen element to collect the mortgage information. Let's name this screen about your mortgage. And we'll set the unique name to get mortgage information. And now let's add a currency field to collect the mortgage amount. We'll label it mortgage amount. And let's set the field to required. Now let's add two more fields. They'll be number fields. The first one will be term months. And let's set the default value to 360 as many mortgages are 30 year mortgages. We'll make this required and then we'll edit the other number field. We'll make this one interest rate percentage. Let's make this required and we'll set this scale to three. So that way we have three digits after the decimal point and press OK. Now we'll connect the two elements. We'll set this to OK for the true path. And now that the true path is set, we'll want to create a false path so that we can create a record based on the lead information given previously. But before we do that, we're going to create a constant. So we'll go to resources and double click constant. And let's name this co-company for the unique name. The reason we're creating a constant is because all leads will need a company name. So instead of having that enter in that information all the time, we're just going to use a constant. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So now what we're going to want to do is go to the palette and drag a record create element onto the canvas. And let's name this create lead because that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to create a lead. So now we'll select the standard object lead because we're going to create a lead object. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add three more fields. So click on add row three times. And what we're going to do is add first name, last name, email, and then company. So the only one that isn't a screen input will be the constant that we created, which will be that co-company, which really is for constant company. So let's go ahead and fill this information in now like I'm doing here. And last name, and email, And then again, company, it's a required field, which is why we're filling it out. Standard company. This will be the only one that's different. We're going to select constants and then co-company. And then verify that your screen looks like mine and press OK. And now we'll connect the decision element to the record create and then the record create to the screen element. And then we'll save our mortgage calculator so we don't lose any work. Once this is done saving, we're going to want to calculate the monthly payment for the mortgage. We could use a simple formula element to do it, but instead we're going to use an Apex plugin to show the power of Apex. Let's open a new tab in our browser and paste this link. This will open up GitHub, which will have the code for the mortgage calculator class. Before we copy this text, let's scroll down to the bottom to look at this one note. It says it will no longer work as of version 28, so we'll want to use version 27. So I'm going to scroll up, grab the raw view, copy the text, 
going to go back to Flow Designer, close out of Flow Designer. I'm going to go to Develop, then to Apex Classes. Click New, copy and paste. It will automatically know the name based upon the class. And just to show you the error, select 28 and hit Save. And you see it can't compile. So I'm going to go ahead and select 27. This should save correctly. I'm going to go back and select Apex Classes just to make sure we see it there. We do. And now we should be able to go back into our flow and see it in our flow. So Workflow and Approvals, Flows. We'll select our Mortgage Calculator Flow, Open. Then on the left, on the palette, we should see the mortgage quote. See that? Now we've successfully imported the Apex plugin. Now we're going to go ahead and run it. To do that, we'll drag the mortgage calculator onto the canvas underneath the About Your Mortgage screen. Let's name it Calculate Quote. And for the inputs, we'll just want to enter the screen information. So screen input fields, mortgage amount, we'll do the same for rate and for term. And we'll select the outputs tab. Under source, we'll select monthly payment. And for the target, we're going to create a new variable. So let's call this VA monthly amount. We'll change the data type to currency. Let's make sure the scale is 2 and then we'll press OK. We'll press OK one more time. And now let's connect the elements. And now we'll add a final screen element to display the mortgage amount. So we'll drag a screen onto the canvas. Let's name this show quote. We'll add a field, a display text field. We'll name it thank you. And I've already cheated by copying all of the workbook text, so I'm going to paste that into the text area. And now we're going to select each resource replacing the X, Y, and Z value. So first will be term. Second will be mortgage amount. And then we'll do our variable monthly amount. Now we're just going to cut and paste each variable into the correct spot. Then verify your screen looks like mine and press OK. And now connect the mortgage calculator to that final screen and let's save our flow. Now that we've saved our flow, let's run and make sure everything works correctly. Click the Run button. Let's fill out a first name, last name, and email address. I'm going to use flow test and test at test.com. Then for the mortgage amount, I'm going to just enter what the workbook had. It's 150000 and then 3.275 for the interest rate. And we should get a mortgage of $654.87. So that's correct. Now what we want to do is make sure that we're only creating one lead record. So I'm going to enter in the exact same information. We'll get the exact same output. And then we're going to check Salesforce to make sure that there's only one flow test user. That still looks correct. I'm going to copy and paste my Salesforce instance in here. Click on Leads. Go. And then I'm going to scroll down and look to make sure there's only one flow test. And there is. Which means our decision element that tests whether or not a record already exists worked. Congratulations, you just completed the longest tutorial in the workbook. In our next video, we'll learn how to activate our mortgage calculator to make it available for use. Thank you for joining us. Click to follow us on YouTube for more great content.